Hi guys, so I thought it was about time I did a bit of a guide on my hot wire cutter or bow and the process of actually cutting out the wings for the spec wing as <laughs> I was, uh, it was kind of a living that out of the whole process really. So um, yeah, let's get on and uh, just go through what you need to build a hot wire bow. Um, these are my dimensions. Um, I, I think mine's rather large. <laughs> Don't like to boast, but it, um, it it could be a lot smaller than this. And um, you know, it's because mine can be a little bit unwieldy. Um, I decided the the width of it would be 800 mil because I didn't want to build a bow that was too small and limit what uh, wings I could build. My logic being with this bow I can build up to a 1.6 meter wingspan uh, wing if I so wish. The uh, distance out to the wire from the middle is 330mm. Um, again I just sort of felt I wanted clearance from anything that I was using to weight down the foam that I was cutting. Um, as I've been going through the process, this doesn't really need to be that much, so I probably will at some point reduce that down um, and try and sort of cut down the weight of the bow itself. Um, lastly, 210mm out to the uh, bolts that kind of what I hook the uh, elastic cord onto. In actual fact, I've actually not actually included that in my parts list, so that's something you will need to do is tension this end of the bow so to keep the, the, the wire nice and taut when you're cutting. That's required. Most importantly, some nichrome wire. Um, I've got a slide in a minute to show you about, you can actually calculate what gauge you need if you feel that 800 mil span is too much um, but this is what myself and Craig are using I think Craig uses a 12 volt tar battery whereas I'm using a 4S LiPo and both seem to work I think with a 12 volt or a 3S battery it was taking a bit of a while to cut and would tend to kind of tug so I upped it to a 4 cell some wood obviously for the, the bow, um, the centre section of mine is just an off cut I had but you could use some wood button for the whole frame um, without issue. Uh, some electrical cable, so you'll have the, the nichrome wire for your bow itself and then you'll obviously need to feed the power from your battery, um, this is a two core cable so you've got a you can have a positive and able positive and negative uh, wire inside this and then feed that to either side of your bow. Some bolts to hold it all together. You also need the bolts uh, to clamp the micro wire onto a switch. This is not essential you can just wire it all up straight to the battery. Um, which I did to begin with, but what I did find was it was a bit of a faff when you were trying to plug the battery in um, and put the bow somewhere where it wasn't going to start cutting things um, when you powered it on. So with the switch I can have the bow in my hand ready to look lined up for the, the cut I'm actually going to do, switch it on and then do the cut, switch it off again. So it's um, it's a really swish process and it means the least amount of drain on your battery as well. Um, so that as the main parts um, that are needed. Uh, I think the only thing I've left out are zip ties. So an XT60 plug to want to go on the end of the wire cable um, and some bulldog clips, crocodile clips, whatever you want to call them. So if you do decide to do a different width bow, you'll need to use a calculator to 
work out what gauge of wire you need if you're going to use a battery. Um, just been reading up on it. If you've got like a, a power source that you can vary the voltage, then it's not so much of an issue. But with these kind of calculators, um, you can just so as you see in this example, I've put in the temperature of 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the website says the phone will melt at 600, but I've kind of added in the margin there. Length of 80 centimeters, the 12.6 volts, it tells me I need a 22 gauge wire. So and luckily that's what I'm using. So if you want to use a smaller um, bow, then you can adjust the length and you'll see what gauge you need. So I want a bit of the details of doing the build. So you'll obviously need to put some holes for your bolts to put the three pieces together. Um, and then with your electrical cable, um, you'll need to split that out so you've got the individual wires inside long enough that they can go to each um, end where the nichrome wire is going to go across. Um, as you can see here, I've zip tied one end to the bottom, and then that goes into my switch, um, and then it's split off, so one piece goes off to one side, one to the other. Um, here you can kind of see, hopefully a bit more, um, better how the, the wires are going off to each side of the, the nichrome wire to put the voltage through the wire. Um, as for the switch, you've got an earth and I think kind of like two live connectors. So what I did, um, I connected the negative, what we're talking, yeah, the negative to the, the kind of the earth sort of um, ends, and then one positive from the battery to one point on the switch, and then the other positive going out to the nichrome wire. And we've also got, so what you do if you um, pass your bolt through the wood and tighten that up with a nut, and then I've used two more nuts to kind of clamp the wire um, onto that nut. And you need a hole for your switch, so that's a uh, place on the center piece of the wood. <laughs> and I kind of covered my switching hot glue just to kind of, I wasn't sure how much I was going to be bashing this um, bow around so I wanted to make sure those connections were protected. Here you can kind of see a bit better where I've got the two negatives connected to the ear part of the switch with the positive coming from the battery on the white cable there um, to the centre and the other positive connected going out to the uh, nichrome wire. Lastly, um, you'll need to add an XT60 uh, plug to the end of your electrical cable. I have got a long length of cable, so it allows me to have my um, battery on the floor, so I've got a, f a, a nice degree of freedom to walk around the shed with the bow um, without having to keep picking the battery up. So hopefully, if that's been of any use, you'll have a bow looking something like this. Um, hope it's been of some use, and I've not rambled on too much. As always, thanks for watching.